1974, Congress passed a law ordering 10,000 Navajo off their land. Land, the government says, belongs to the Hopi tribe. Congress has ordered the Navajo to move by 1986, despite the protests of the traditional Hopi and Navajo people. Chairman, I'm here today to discuss the tragedy of relocating over 9,000 of my tribal people from the native homeland. More than 75% of the Navajo relocatees will be condemned to a life of misery, poverty, and alienation. Just how would you have any income if you're forced to, to, to move? Uh, do you have any other way of making a living other than livestock raising? I make my living with the sheep. You don't have to carry them on your back, you just herd them. This is how I live. I will not relocate. If I were offered a new home, I would be a stranger in such a place. I wouldn't know how to operate the heating or the lighting system. And the expense, I'm sure, would be tremendous. How would I pay for these utilities? I have no income and have never been to any school. Assuming we go through with this destructive effort, how and where would she be relocated on the Navajo reservation? Senator DeConcini, there is no place on the Na present Navajo reservation to which she can relocate to carry on the way of life that she has described. The United States government created reservations for the Navajo and Hopi tribes more than a century ago. Navajo lived near the Hopi villages long before the reservation line was drawn and the government allowed them to stay until now. Today the government is spending one half billion dollars to partition the Hopi reservation between the two tribes and to move the Navajo out of the Hopi half. Most of the Navajo are being moved into border towns hundreds of miles from their homeland. Before moving, I was living very well. The sheep and the cows were like a bank. It was good when I relied on them. Now I fall into hunger. My shoes are all worn out, and that is the truth. Here I'm told to pay for everything, even the water. I owe taxes, too. I just suffer from all the bills. 11, 19 is your change. 10, 11, and 19 cents. Thank you. Have a nice day now. When Hastin learned that his hogan had been deliberately burned down, he suffered a stroke. While he was in the hospital, his tracked house was repossessed for non-payment of taxes and utility bills. There is no word for relocation in the Navajo language. To relocate is to disappear and never be seen again.
have this extraordinary group of Americans uh, whose culture is fading. It's under all sorts of pressures, uh, which is attempting to adapt gradually, which is making all sorts of compromises subject to all sorts of stress, um, that now through this act of Congress is being, is being terminated. It's being invalidated. It's being forced to get off its center, the land. That's, that's the integrating principle of the culture. And I say, why? Enormous quantities of minerals are buried here. On the Navajo reservation alone lie 100 million barrels of oil, 25 trillion cubic feet of natural gas, 80 billion pounds of uranium, and 50 billion tons of coal, by conservative estimates. The energy corporations want the resources under Indian land, and if necessary, the native people will be sacrificed. Since before human memory, winds and waters have sculpted this sacred Indian land and shaped the landscape like no other on earth. For 150,000 moons, Indian prayers have bonded the land and sky. This was home, first for the Anasazi, stargazers and architects of antiquity. The Anasazi designed the blueprint for civilization in North America. Their descendants, the Hopi, are the oldest culture surviving today. The word Hopi means peace, and the Hopi have been a people of peace for thousands of years. The Hopis are a Pueblo people who live in villages atop the mesas that lie within the center of this disputed area. For centuries, they remained close to the mesas. They farm plots in outlying areas, never going very far from the mesas because they always needed to be able to return to the villages to participate in the ceremonial life of the tribe. The Hopi have always lived with religion as the heart of their culture, the axis around which all life turns. have synchronized their energies to the rhythms of the universe. Their rituals are as highly developed as the most intricate mathematical equations. Seeing the world through Hopi eyes is seeing the world in balance. A thousand years ago, the Navajo, or Dene as they call themselves, migrated into the southwest. According to their mythology, the Navajo came into existence through a circular opening called the Emergence Place. They settled within the four sacred mountains with the Hopi at the center. They, along with the Hopi, believed they were placed here to be caretakers of Mother Earth and to protect the sacred center of the continent. 
When the Navajo first came into the Southwest, they were hunters and gatherers moving with the seasons, living in simple shelters in small family groups. The Navajo Nation was a loose association of families and clans. They became shepherds. The Navajo believe that the sheep are gifts from the holy people. When it's cold and dark with snow, you wrap yourself up. And instead of forgetting the sheep, you stand by them with your teeth chattering. Long ago it was said, if your fingernails are frostbitten and your toenails are fallen off from herding sheep, only then do your sheep belong to you. With the wool from the sheep, the Navajo developed the art of weaving. Their rugs became their primary source of income in the modern world. The Navajo learned how to farm the desert from the Hopi, and corn became an important part of their lives. With farming, the people became rooted. They built permanent shelters called hogans, which opened to the east to greet the sun. I was born where there were no enclosures, and everyone drew a free breath. Big Mountain is a shrine to the Navajo who built their homes around its base. The people here are all related by blood, clan, or marriage. For generations, they have passed the land down from mother to daughter. Until now, half the Big Mountain people have been ordered to relocate. <laughs> I'm a woman from Big Mountain. In our minds, we love this mountain very much. From the beginning, it was put here for us. I have children. I have a husband. I have the continuing generations of my family. This land must not be stolen from the coming generations. What my older people say, it's right. And a way for us to have our culture keep on going and not to forget what our ancestors have brought to us. These ways were put here with us. We shake the pollen from the corn plant and offer it to the sun. The Holy Spirit protects us. We pray for ourselves in this way. The Navajo elders know the properties of plants and herbs how to prepare them for different purposes. They know how to use crystals and prayers for healing, how to use planets and stars in planting. This is the heritage they pass down to their children in the sacred circle of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
The juice from these berries will cure your eyes if they're irritated. These berries are also used to make dyes. The dyes that belong to the white man color the wool right away. But with this, you have to let it sit for a long time before it will do that. These true elders, they, they don't need money to live. So, like sometimes they say money, to us money is nothing. Then they don't care for modern things like new materials or nice homes. They don't care for those because they know that, that those won't last long. This grinding stone was put here for us a long time ago. Washington does not recognize these ways. If he were to look at these things, he would think them of no value. But to us they are holy. Washington says, go away, go someplace else. Go walk among people in places you don't know. We are not hard enough to survive in places that we are unfamiliar with. If we leave here, we'll grieve for our homeland and it'll kill us. It's almost as if they've lost a portion of their soul.